wanted to do a quick video of um, doing a very simple motor model and then designing a mount around it. So as I mentioned in my email, a digital caliper is going to be really useful um, for making the measurements of the actual motor. This is what I have in my hand here. I'm hoping that you can read the, the actual sizes. So it's really just a caliper that you uh, measure distances um, or, or widths. Actually, you can measure inside and outside diameters as well as depth using the um, rod that um, protrudes from the end. So uh, mostly we're just going to do outside diameter here. So this motor happens to be, looks like 1.404 or roughly 1.4 inches in diameter and uh, has a length of about 1.967. So um, we could say two inches to round that up. You want to be careful about rounding, particularly when you're machining to um, accuracies um, in the thousandth of an inch. So, but right now, let's just uh, draw a 1.4 diameter circle um, to, and then extrude it two inches long and we'll have a representation of our motor. All right, so um, the circle tool is here on SketchUp. It draws circles by radius. Uh, measurements are almost always diameter. So um, usually what I'll do is I'll draw a line, and I'll draw that line um, the length that I want, 1.4 inches. All right, so I'm going to hit Escape to release that line from the pencil. And then I have, a, so this line represents the diameter. This makes it really easy to do a radius because the circle tool will snap to the midpoint of that line. So I'm going to click on that midpoint, carry it to the end. Now I have a circle that is uh, 1.4 inches in diameter. I'm going to erase this uh, line across the center. I'm going to use the push-pull tool. And I'm going to pull that up. And then I'm going to type the number 2 for inches. And um, there we have a rough model of our motor. Right now, this motor is a series of lines and uh, surfaces. Um, and if I try to move any one of them, um, it doesn't move as a whole. And we want this motor to essentially be one um, constant uh, object. Uh, it's a simple way to do that in SketchUp. Um, we will select the um, all of the lines and surfaces that would comprise the motor. I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to say make that a component. And I'm simply going to name it motor. Once we've created that object, you now see that it's an indivisible object. If I move it, the whole thing moves. If I copy it, I get a copy of the whole thing. So this will be nice uh, because I can draw on it or draw lines on or near it that won't become part of it. So using the Move tool, which is a powerful um, overloaded tool, I'm going to hover over one of these red uh, plus signs until I see the compass. And I'm going to rotate that down um, until it's in a horizontal plane. So there we have a representation of a motor that is fairly close to the physical dimensions uh, of the actual motor that we have. So if we draw a mount that fits this motor, we should have a pretty good, uh, a pretty good fit. So using the um, pencil tool, I'm going to start on one side. I'm going to go out. Let's say I have my snapping to one eighth of an inch. I'm going to go out. Um, let's go out a half an inch, and we'll go down an inch, and then we'll go over so that we're even with the outside. And then I'm going to go an additional half inch. Now, one of the um, features that I used was called axis locking. You notice that SketchUp, when you are drawing a line, will tend to find at the axes that you're close 
most closely aligned with. So right now you see that my proposed line is blue. If I move it down here, it'll turn red. If I move it out uh, near the green axis, it'll turn green. It should, there it is, turn green. So what I want to do is I want to bring this line up even with that line, but I want it to be vertical. So I'm going to lock it onto the blue axis. And you do that simply by holding the shift key. So now that the line is in the blue axis, I'm going to press the shift key. You get that bold blue line. Now as I move my pencil, the line I'm going to draw is going to be locked to the blue axis. So I want this line to be equal to the length of this line. And then I want it to come over and touch the side of the motor. Hit escape to uh, complete that line. So now we have the outline of the base of a simple motor mount. We need to do complete this outline by drawing uh, the semicircular line um, around the bottom of the motor. So I'm going to use the circle tool for that. And I'm going to use SketchUp inferences to find the center of the circle. I'm going to hover over a point on the edge of the surface of the circle for two or three seconds. And then I'm going to move toward the center. And you'll see that the circle tool will pop or snap to the center. So I'm going to click to start the circle. I'm going to go over to the side and click to finish it. So now I have a complete circle that completes the mount. I don't really need this top part here. So um, that's easily uh, deleted. But I wanted to show you how you can manipulate this um, separately from the motor. Now that we have that contour, um, we don't necessarily really need the motor anymore. We could just delete the motor, but we might need it later. So I'm going to move to the Select tool. I'm going to triple click to select all connected geometry. I'm going to use the Move tool to move it. And I want to make a copy, so I'm going to press the Control key once. And you'll notice that I get a plus sign on my Move tool. So now I'm going to click and I'm going to move a copy over like so. OK. So this is what we want to work with. I'm back to my Select tool. I'm going to select that top half of the circle and delete it. Now we have um, a profile that will work um, fairly nicely for a simple mount for that motor. Use the Push-Pull tool to pull that out and align it to the back on the motor. OK, so that looks pretty good. Um, so that's a half circle. So if we had another one just like this, we could put it on the top half and in, uh, create a way to fasten them together. And uh, we'd be able to um, tighten the motor down between the two halves. So as I did with the motor, now I'm going to um, select all of the geometry associated with this mount. And I'm going to create a component. And I'm going to call it mount. We know we're going to need two of these. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it by using the Move tool, pressing the Control key to get a copy. I'm going to select on, um, on the lower right corner. I'm going to move that up to there. And then I have two. Again, using the Move tool, I'm going to hover over one of the red plus signs to get Rotate. And I'm going to turn it upside down. Now I have the two halves of the mount. Looks like I have an extra line here that's unnecessary. So let's go ahead and edit that and um, uh, remove it. That's where I stop this line to align with this point and then add it a half inch so that I'd have a symmetric piece. So to edit this, you right click on it, which will select it and bring up the um, command menu. And I'm going to select Edit Component. And now all of the uh, functions of SketchUp are available, but they'll apply only to um, the component that's being edited. So there are lots of ways to delete this. I'm going to select it, and then I'm going to hit the Delete key. 
Okay, close that component by right-clicking on it, selecting the option for close. So that's a very basic motor mount. Really, the only thing that would be left is to add uh, screw holes. Uh, so this could actually be mounted to something. Let's see how tall we ended up making this. So that's uh, two inches. So we could actually use a two and a half inch screw well, through the top and into a board, and that would uh, that would probably be the simplest way uh, to mount this. So we need to add uh, screw holes that are appropriately sized uh, for what screws we might have on hand. So let's edit this component. We want those screws to align such that they go right through the middle of this narrow section. So you notice that my pencil, there's an inference point for midpoint as I hover over um, the middle of this line segment. If I hover there for a couple of seconds and move up, you'll see that there's an alignment uh, indicator there. And it allows me to click on the upper line such that it's aligned with the center of the lower line. Okay, so now I'm going to complete them and I start the draw, start the line drawing, and then I'm going to draw it to the back. This will be the line in which the screw holes will be centered on. Um, I'd like to place these screws uh, evenly uh, such that they're um, the same amount of material on the left and right of each group. So I'm going to right click on this line, which will select it, bring up a command dialog, and I'm going to select the divide feature. This will allow me to divide this single line into um, it pretty much any number of equal uh, distant line segments. So I'm going to choose four here. Four. And now rather than these lines uh, being continuous, you see it's actually comprised of four separate lines. And I'm going to use those endpoints to align my screw holes. So I'm going to select the circle tool. I'm going to let it snap to the end of that first segment. I'm going to draw it out and I'm going to space it at point um, one inch. Okay, now I come to the end of this line and do the same. Let me make sure that's the right size. And um, so I have the location of the first two holes. I'm going to delete my line segments now. I don't want to be needing those anymore. And I'm going to copy these two circles. So I've selected them. I've chosen the Move tool. I've hit the control key to be in copy mode. And I'm going to choose two relative points, um, a point for which the move starts and a point for which the move finishes. So if we go back to here, we know we want those holes to line up with the center of this narrow section. That's where we drew the first one. So that'll be our start point. Now then, you can see I have two circles that I'm moving around. And where I want them to be aligned is with the center of the opposite narrow segment. So wait till it turns blue. It'll say midpoint. And I'm going to click. So there I have my four um, screws, screw hole locations. Using the push-pull tool, I'm going to push this hole down till it's uh, um, even with the bottom, which will prefer it, um, perforate it. And then uh, the push-pull tool will remember the dis distance of its last push or pull. So I can just double-click on these other surfaces to get those pieces to go through. So now, um, in its most simplest form, that mount should be complete. So I'm going to close that component, and I'm going to take a look at it. I've got holes on the top and the bottom. See, let's look through these holes. Yep, they go clean through when they're aligned on the top. Everything looks nicely aligned. And now I'm going to go into X-ray mode, which allows you to see through the object, see if I have any um, stray or errant lines that need to be cleaned up. Looks good. And then the last final check is I'm going to select the component. 
I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to go to Entity Info. That brings up this dialog here. It'll tell you that the definition name is Mount, but the important thing that we're looking for is we want to make sure that this uh, component um, is described as a solid component. That's uh, important when it comes time to 3D printing an object. Um, you don't really want any stray lines or mistakes that may interfere with the software that slices and prepares uh, a model to be printed. So um, this was a lot longer than I had hoped it would be, but it's a simple uh, motor mount. It would uh, work completely uh, effectively. Um, I'm hoping that you guys will experiment with uh, other designs, more elegant designs, um, more interesting or artistic designs, um, and, um, and then use it as a method for learning um, to use uh, SketchUp uh, more proficiently. So anyway, there you have it. I hope that helps.